Ready yeah. to fence this thing? Sure. Yeah, that's a hawk. There's been a lot of them around lately. I think it's mating season. I actually just saw a second one flew away. Fly away. The yeah, chickens are not coming out today. He's waiting for them to come out and eat their breakfast. You see that? Sorry, dude. I'm foiling your plans. This yard is so boring when the chickens are locked up. It's so empty. No activity. No entertainment. But when they're locked up, they lay all the eggs where they were supposed to. And I don't have to hunt around the yard for them. I actually got 11 today instead of four. So that's a good thing. I just recorded this whole explanation of what I was doing here and afterwards realized my phone was still on time lapse so there was no audio and it was really high speed. So let me try this again. Uh, what you just saw me doing was marking out my rose in my garden with yarn because I can't find my twine. I don't know where it is. Uh, but anyways, it just gives me uh, kind of a visual guide to go by to make sure my rows are straight. And then it also um, helps me make sure I'm spacing them correctly. I've got the space three feet that gives enough room for space as well for walking in between without stepping on things. Um, and I did make a mistake of calculating my area wrong when I was planning. Yeah, I calculated from this corner post to this corner post instead of that corner. Because I can't make a row right here in the middle there. Yeah, so that ended up giving me like four fewer linear feet than I had planned on. So I actually had to scratch one of my rows. I was supposed to have six rows here. Now I only have five and then my squash mounds. But um, I, it was mostly carrots that last row that I scratched. So what I think I'm gonna do is some of these rows over here are gonna have cooler season crops like lettuces and peas, things like that. So once those crops are done, then I'll come back and succession plant with the carrots. I prefer a fall carrot anyways, because the cooler weathers uh, makes the sugar go down into the root and concentrate more, so it's sweeter, which I like a sweeter carrot. So I, it'll probably work out fine. It just kind of messed up my plane a little bit, not what I planned on, but you know, you adjust, adapt, overcome, and fix it next time. Welcome to the kitchen floor, where we are repotting tomato plants. <laughs> uh, these uh, tomatoes, as you can see, are getting very rooty. They are running out of room in these uh, little starting containers. So we're gonna be putting them up into bigger containers. I'm just using ones that I have around that I've used in the past. Some of them are on their last leg, so I'm gonna get, need to get some new ones. But um, these will give them, um, probably four times as much room and hopefully take us until it's time to get them in the ground. I recently saw another homesteader potting up her tomatoes by using uh, a single cell from a cell pack to make the hole in her larger pot. So it's like the perfect size for the transplanted seedling, which I thought was genius. So I thought I would try it. The best way that I found to pop these up was to put a scoop of dirt in there, put your single cell in, and fill up the larger pot around the cell. Ideally not going to the top of the larger pot. And when you take your cell out, there's the perfect hole there for you to put your seedling that is to be transplanted. And then you can continue to fill up with dirt all the way to the top of the pot covering part of that tomato stem in the process. 
and that will allow the tomato to actually grow extra roots along the stem, which will give it a stronger root system. Are you helping? These are metal stuff. Those are metal stuff. And they're, they're not, not poison. Not poison. <laughs> yeah. Ready to fence this thing? Sure. for today we fenced this back part here and we just stopped right there at the corner and we'll just finish another day probably should have done this before I got started because now I'm out of breath so last night our neighbor was very gracious to go and pick up a truckload of wood chips for us and he went like a step beyond that instead of just dumping it in our yard he actually spread it in the garden for us which was a huge help huge blessing I did not expect him to do that therefore I did not have my rose uh, hilled up. So now I'm having to kind of shove the wood chips out of the way so I can get to the dirt to kind of pile it in a little bit of a hill there for the rose and then rake it back over. But that's okay because he saved us a lot of work by spreading it. So I'm not gonna complain about it. Um, if you can see so far, I am gonna need the end there needs some more. It wasn't quite as thick at that end, but that's okay. There's a nice pile here of extra that didn't get spread. Um, so yeah, I don't know if you can see how nice and super deep this is. We wanted a good at least four inches of wood chips there to help keep the uh, weeds at bay to prevent the weeds from coming up through. Obviously the cardboard is going to go a long way to help that and then just because of raking into hills there's not as much dirt right there in the middle of the rows and then four inches of wood chips and that should keep most of the weeds away um, also as it breaks down it will feed the soil and so and then it also it'll keep help keep all of the soil moist so it doesn't dry out because drying out not good for plants right um, so it'll help reduce the need for watering so wood chips are your friend and it's starting to rain so I'm gonna put the camera down and go finish this job real quick Okay. Woohoo! <laughs> I fired the phone. Ta da! We have finished the fence, all except for a gate. Mike is just making sure that all the clips are tight. Um, and then it's done. And it's doing its job, keeping the chickens out because they want to get hold of this mulch. <laughs>
very much want to get a hold of smolts. We kept having to shoo them out while we were working. But um, so we've got this leftover roll here, just kind of tied there temporarily to keep them out until we get a uh, gate up. But other than that, we need to get some more mulch down for this area over here that didn't get enough. Just a little bit around the edges. And then it'll be ready for planting. You guys went out. You went out. Why do you always eat my clothes? Poor things have had to be locked in lately because we have had an excessive amount of hawks. So they're very happy to come out when we're out working in the yard. Well, hopefully that temporary gate keeps the chickens out because I've got some early cool season crops that need to be planted. Okay, first up is peas. Next is a half row of beets. These rows are hilled up. I just have my wood chips between the rows so deep that you really can't tell. <laughs> So we'll keep a lot of the moisture in the soil, which will help with germination. I have no idea what this is, or how to pronounce it. It was a free seed I got, so we'll try it. That concludes our cool season crop planting. Um, in just a couple weeks here, we'll be ready to transplant, transplant out some of the other ones that we started indoors. But until then, we will keep an eye on these and probably just give them a just a quick water. That rain we got yesterday was hard and fast, but not long, so it didn't really penetrate very deeply. So I'm gonna probably water these real good, and then we're done for now.